Below this field is one of the most complicated machines ever built, a real-life time machine. Buried hundreds of meters beneath the French-Swiss border, this machine will shoot beams of energy around a 27-kilometer long loop and smash those beams of energy together again at the end. This giant loop is the track for the world's newest particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC. It's designed to peer into the origins of the universe and is the brainchild of 6,000 of the world's top scientific minds. Jeff Taylor is the head of physics at Melbourne University, but here in Switzerland, he's a key contributor to the LHC project. As we come into this new era with, with the Large Hadron Collider, we are, we are going to be discovering uh, aspects of nature which we, which we ha couldn't have dreamed of in the past. This is really the most exciting period for, for physicists, for scientists, in, since the beginning of the 20th century. It's been a long time coming. We have uh, constructed this for many, many years. And, and to suddenly go into this phase where really everything starts to come together and starts to click into each other and to really work as a, as a whole is, uh, is immensely exciting. Atlas is the name of the giant detector at the heart of the project. It's being built underground in a six-story deep construction pit filled with the world's biggest magnets, layered by 3,000 kilometers of wiring and all weighing 7,000 tons. All of this so that protons, the heaviest part of the atom, can be smashed at near the speed of light inside the machine, creating conditions that haven't existed since a trillionth of a second after the birth of the universe. It is a machine which operates at a temperature of 1.9 degrees Kelvin. Which in Celsius terms? Uh, which is minus 271 degrees. The collider lives at the CERN laboratory outside of Geneva. CERN buzzes. It requires its own relay station to power the collider, and above that you'll catch the intellectual hum of the world's best scientists. At the CERN cafeteria, sometimes there are five Nobel Prize winners eating with, with students and postdocs and other, and other staff members. It's a very, very rich environment, and uh, it's a very testing environment. The, uh, they, the students work very, very hard, but it's, it's very inspiring. At the cafeteria, I meet the head of the Atlas project. Peter Jenny tells me that when the machine gets turned on early next year, anything could happen. We have pretty exciting ideas from theory what could happen, but the most exciting for an experimentalist would be that actually something which nobody has foreseen could be discovered. It's really going into a new land. It in a way, sometimes people say it's like, uh, like uh, when people uh, explore the uh, new territories. Columbus didn't, did, did find something exciting, not India, but something else, and maybe something like that may happen. The biggest job of the collider is to sift the cosmic soup for a particle called the Higgs boson, also dubbed the God particle. The standard model of, of particles, that our basis for understanding what we're made of right now is missing some major ingredients. And the Higgs is, is, the, is, is probably going to be the, the saviour of, of, of the standard model. It's going to take us to, uh, to the next layer of understanding. The Higgs boson is a theoretical particle that's never been detected. It appears at energy levels that only this new machine can reach. And even inside the Atlas, the Higgs boson may only be visible every 10 trillion collisions. We're looking for not a needle in a haystack. I think we're looking for a needle in about 10,000 haystacks. Um, probably even more like 100,000 haystacks, depending on how big a needle you're looking for. The, the, 
The extraction of such a small signal from such a large amount of data has never been done before. What makes finding the Higgs particle worth the multi-billion dollar investment is the fact that it's thought to give everything in the universe its mass. And after centuries of probing the big questions, physics still has no answer for where mass comes from. The Higgs is well described as a field permeating the universe which slows everything down, effectively giving it the equivalent of a mass. Peter Higgs suggested that moments after the Big Bang, a field was created which stretches across the entire universe like a molasses. And as particles wade through it, they become heavy. It's taken two decades and eight billion dollars to design and build a machine capable of testing his theory. Dr. Taylor tells me that these experiments are shaking our understanding of the universe to the core. They're of the scale of Copernicus uh, realizing that we weren't the center of the solar system. They're on the scale of quantum, quantum physics brushing aside all the shortcomings of the classical physics that had been, been uh, developed through the 17th and 18th, uh, 18th centuries. Um, we are on the verge of a discovery of understanding how our universe evolved from the very fundamental first few fraction of a second. This pixel detector is the center of the Atlas experiment. The detector tracks the paths of all the new particles that veer off after every collision. High-tech devices like this one lead to all sorts of practical spin-offs. The challenges posed by particle physics help create the silicon chips in all computers, the X-ray and the medical MRI. Even the World Wide Web was born at CERN to help physicists share massive amounts of information across the globe. Back in the 90s when we were first talking about these detectors and the complexity, the data rates coming out of one experiment, out of the Atlas experiment, was, was equivalent to the entire telecommunications um, data rates of the world at the time. So there was absolutely no way without massive uh, technology development it was ever going to work. Using this kind of cutting-edge technology, Dr. Taylor and his colleagues will do more than just look for the Higgs particle. They'll search for dark matter, the stuff that we can't see, but that exerts a strong gravitational pull on everything in space. They'll investigate a theory called supersymmetry, which suggests that for every particle we know of, there may be a twin particle somewhere that we've never found. The LHC will even create mini black holes, raising concerns among some members of the public that the Earth may be sucked into an artificial void. I knew you would ask that, and I purposely did not mention that. <laughs> I, I have heard this concern, and of, pe and of course people have studied such possibilities. The black hole which people talk about uh, is not the same size as the black hole which we expect to have, or which we know to have, at the centre of the galaxy. Um, these are small black holes, and they decay very quickly. The final touches are now being put on the Large Hadron Collider so that it can come online early next year. These men are machining parts to move a 1,000-ton magnet into place at the end of the Atlas pit. It's mind-boggling to see what has to be done. Those magnets are um, absolute feats themselves, individually. They're, they cost, they're the biggest cost of the, of the, whole, of the whole accelerator, but they uh, took years and years and years of development and their uh, fields, uh, magnetic fields are greater than any industrial size object by a long, long way. This machine is so precise that all it takes is for one screw to be loose and years of work can be lost. The proton beam can punch through 15 meters of solid copper if it's misaligned. And yet, the scientists here are all supremely confident that this machine is going to work. 
I would say the worst outcome would be that the machine did not work. Now, this is an impossible outcome. It will certainly work, although it will be a mammoth enterprise to make it work well. The success or failure of this project will seriously affect the future of big science worldwide. With uh, the LHC, I think the community uh, must prove that we are actually able to, to master uh, such complex, uh, complex uh, detectors, such a complex program. And uh, I am personally convinced that uh, this is an absolutely necessary condition for, uh, for big future uh, projects.